Welcome back, everybody, to Hoops HD. It's our continuing 2024-2025 preseason coverage. Uh, tonight, we are bringing you our Big 12 preview show, or our Big 16 preview show, as Mr. Sleek is pointing out down there. Uh, I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined up top here by David Dorman and David Griggs. Down below me, Joby Fortson. To his sides, John Titel and John Stalika. And we've got a lot to get to because we've got a very big conference which with a ton of teams that are starting the season in the top 25 polls. A ton of teams that were in the NCAA tournament last year, although none of them advanced past the Sweet 16. Um, and we also have the number one team in the nation in the preseason polls coming in. And maybe that is just where we should start off with, with the Kansas Jayhawks. And Joby, since this is your first time with us this season, why don't I start with you as well? Uh, what are your thoughts about th this Kansas team that, like I said, yeah. ranked number one heading into the season? Yeah, Joby making his season debut. Where the hell have you been? Andy's on mute. What, what's been going on in Virginia? <laughs> Anything? Where have you been? <laughs> what? I, I, I've, been, I've been undermining Tony Bennett. Uh, yeah, just worked. a quick note. We are recording this on the evening of October 17th, which means uh, we all just heard the news coming out of Tony Bennett's retirement, but we did the ACC last night. <laughs> but Tony, uh, Big 12 yeah, Kansas. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm in mourning as, as our uh, Virginia, as our Virginia fan resident. But on to Kansas, what I love about Kansas, why they deserve the number one ranking is I like I like teams that have inside outside capability. And when you've got Hunter Dickinson, who's, who's, you know, probably the, I think he won preseason player of the, of the year, you know, projected he's an all American candidate, et cetera. Um, Naismith candidate, you know, all the way you got your inside and in his ability to pass the ball as well as just be that big presence and shoot, uh, you know, is what makes him so strong. But the unique thing that I really like is Zeke Mayo. I think this is, you know, he's a, Local kid goes off, you know, to to South Dakota, and uh, and then comes back. Uh, and I think Zeke Mayo is going to be the key to really make this team go. Uh, it's not going to be a case where you can just, you know, pack on a Hunter Dickson, Dickinson, force him to throw the ball, and oh, good luck creating from there. I think you're going to see a lot of creation uh, fly out, you know, from that spot. Yeah, you know, where you basically have a couple of point guards, for lack of a better word, on the floor. So that's really, you know, um, you know, AJ Store is going to be a good addition as well. I mean, I mean, Bill Self has done it again. He's, you know, every year they are. It seems like they are a projected Final Four type team. This is no different. I think they'll do better than the fifth place they did last year. Uh, and if for no other reason, I think the Big 12 isn't, while its depth is there because there's 16 teams, you don't have every team is not a candidate for uh, the NCAA tournament this year. I don't see slip ups and them sliding down the list too far. Maybe Houston or someone else can fight them for it. But Kansas is a very respectable pick to be not only the Big 12 champion at the end of the year, but a real contender for the national champion, as the pollsters have indicated. Um, just going to echo something that you said, Joby, about Zeke Mayo. Uh, myself, I know Chad and, and Stalika too follow under the radar. If you, most people watching us probably go deep into the weeds of college basketball, but in case you don't, this is a fantastic player. He was a, I mean, I know he was at South Dakota State, but this is a high level power five possible nba level player he's phenomenal yeah he's the re i will i project that he will be all big 12 this year though i will yeah. defer to john titel if he has different thoughts I, I liked him a lot better when he was at south dakota state <laughs> well titel you've been you've been, you've been oh, called Dorman's here well, what too. Are Dorman's thoughts? an under the radar guy too i'm sorry i didn't mean to, uh, yeah. but titel titel what, what are your thoughts about that question you repeat the question, please. There was a lot of chatter. <laughs> is it Zeke Mayo? Is, yeah, is Zeke Mayo? Do you think Zeke Mayo can be first team All Big Twelve? He certainly can. Uh, great score, um, and we've seen transfers succeed in the past when they go to number one schools. But uh, 
You could also argue he's not even the most important guard in his team as Dewan Harris Jr. is a Harris, time yeah. all defensive team players. So yeah. um, the answer is yes, but the also, the sidebar is that he might not even be the best backcourt player on his own team. I think that also shows how deep and how strong this team is, though, Titel. I mean, that, that, that I, I agree with Joby that this team is very much a national championship contender and should yeah. probably be the favorite heading into the season. What do, you uh, think? do you think they're underrated a little bit coming into the season? <laughs> That's a no. Uh, Those are no, available. No. <laughs> okay. uh, first of all, quick note here: Matt Sikowski joining us as well, jumping in here. Matt, it's great to have you on the show as well. Uh, Thank but, you. But Dorman, you were mentioned earlier, so why don't I go to you next? Because we had some mention of this Houston team. They are oh. number four in the nation. They were a one seed at the highest rated team heading into the NCAA tournament last year as well. Uh, how about Kelvin Sampson's team this year? Absolutely loaded. Uh, Cam, uh, Kelvin Sampson's got a great squad coming. LJ Cryer uh, from uh, Baylor a few years ago, now been in the system. I think he'll take a step up. Jawan Roberts, Emmanuel Sharp. And uh, from Oklahoma, they brought in Milos Uzan, who will also give them yeah. some, uh, I think, a real, a, a real solid player that takes them, I think, from a really good team to championship caliber. I yes. think that – Samson has all the pieces he needs. I think they can play with Kansas. I think they can challenge for the Big 12 with Kansas. And having said that, like you guys just said, they'll challenge for the championship if they're as good as I think they can be. And I agree with it, Matt. What, what yes. do you think? Uh, that, that maybe Uza, Uza, I think, it is, is going to be a huge addition to this team this year. You know, I think I think it could step in pretty well for where the, the tradition of point guards of that. And you like that with Cryer and Sharp on the wing. I think it'll be a good fit. He could distribute the ball to them and not have to worry about being a scorer as much as he had to last year in Oklahoma and did and struggled a little bit in that role. And and everyone else is back. Other than, other than Sweat, everyone else is back, right? I mean, on this team pretty much, right? Uh, uh, a rarity in college basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Shed's not back, is he? Yeah, Shed. I'm sorry, I said yeah. Shed. I, 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 yeah, I said, okay. I, He's I, the only I, one. My, the only, right. only Jamal Shed is gone. I'm, th- I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, um, I... I love this Houston team. Um, I, I I think they can win it all. Uh, they're my preseason pick to win it all. Uh, l- last year, I picked Miami to the final four, so I know <laughs> what I'm talking about here. Uh, Titel, uh, number five in the nation, yet the third or the third team are <laughs> we bring it up in the Big Twelve. How about the Cyclones this year, who are getting a lot of preseason love? As they should. Uh, Coach T.J. Otzelberger only won 19 games in 2023. He won 29 last year, including a Big 12 tournament title when he won three games in a row by 14 or more points, then made the Sweet 16 before a three-point loss to the Illini. They add a double-digit scorer in Deshaun Jackson from Charlotte and an all-MVC player in Nate Heisey from Northern Iowa, returns the first-team all-conference point guard in team in Lipsy and an all-conference freshman team power forward in Milan Momsilovich. They do lose Keyshawn Gilbert, Curtis Jones, and Trey King. So it's while the cupboard is not bare, they certainly lost some big pieces. Number five in the preseason poll, I think that is very accurate. And I think they, depending on how Kansas does, have a legit shot at winning a second straight Big 12 tournament championship. Yeah. Um, still- just a question for our historians. I guess that's Ty Tell and Stalika. Has the fifth ranked team in the preseason poll ever been the third pick in the conference ever? <laughs> It's got to be. Last year. By the way, Titel, and correct me, I thought Keyshawn Gilbert was back. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Giving Gilbert, an Gilbert. even bigger reason why this team could make a huge run. I, I love this backcourt of Gilbert and Lipsy there, actually. I think that this, that, that's, could be one of the best, that could be the best backcourt of the conference. Uh, and we're talking with everything else in this league, which, which is impressive. Um, Salika, let me bring you in here as well. Uh, we're still in the top 10 here. We're down to our fourth team. How about number eight in the nation, Baylor? Uh, you look at a team like Baylor, you get a couple of notable returners in uh, Langston Love and Jaden Nunn. But when you also look at some of the people they got out of the transfer portal and Norshad O'Meara coming from Miami and Jeremy Roach coming from Duke, you're certainly going to have a, a unit that should hopefully be cohesive together, but you've also got a couple top hundred freshmen with VJ Edcombe, Robert Wright the third, and Jason Asamoda. I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly. This is going to be a team that's also going to get tested right off the bat with uh, games against Gonzaga up in Spokane and against uh, 
Calipari's Arkansas team down in Dallas. Oh, by the way, they also have a couple games in the Bahamas as well, a game against UConn, and finally they'll ease into the bathtub known as the Big 12. <laughs> it, 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 Joby, my question on, on Baylor here is, among all these top teams in the Big 12, this is the team that, that's got to rely on the transfers the most, I think, which is kind of rare this or day and age almost. Transferred and, freshmen is the most, the new, the newbies, the most, the newcomers. Yeah, Stalika is right. VJ Edgecombe, I, I, this, this is the kid to watch. Uh, yeah, yeah, as it is, he's exciting, he's explosive. Um, playing off, I mean, this is the point guard conference, man. I mean, it's just amazing how good the point guards are. You know, as it were, as Lipsy, you know, uh, point out Mayo, who, who we've discussed. I, it, it, it really is amazing. I think. You're going to – this team will rise. It's what you said, Chad, though. This team will rise or fall with how the new guys integrate. Do they – does VJ Edgecombe immediately uh, – is he an immediate, like, lottery pick to come, which he very well may be? Uh, or does he get lost? His freshmen sometimes get lost for a year or two. And – you know, Roach coming in to steady things, I think, is really valuable here uh, as the ACC guy. You know, I saw what he did at Duke. He's not going to be asked to score here, which is good, but he will be asked to be a leader. He can be a leader, and he is a glue guy. And maybe that, that is why the newcomer issue might not be as, uh, might not be as tense for the Baylor Bears. Uh Dorman, we have yet another team that's also in the top 10 preseason. <laughs> We're already five five teams into this conference. Was a two-seed in the NCAA tournament last year. We're not even as a member of this conference, but you add them in to make this conference even more insane. And they're your Arizona Wildcats. Uh, what about your team this year? Tommy Lloyd is bringing a lot back. Caleb Love, Jaden Bradley, Krebus, the big guy, who I think is highly underrated. Because Balo had to be on the court so much. It was tough to get Krebus enough minutes last year. I think he's an absolute stud. I think he has a huge year coming. Um, and KJ Lewis, also another swing at crazy athletic guard. But uh, if you remember last year where Oakland upset Kentucky in the tournament, there was a big guy down low, Trey Townsend. He was like the heart and the soul of the team. His dad had a media pass. He was behind the bucket. Uh, with a camera, the whole story was great. But the kid is all in, and he's all heart and soul, and he lives for defense and rebounding. And I think this is what Arizona needs, a guy that isn't concerned about scoring, isn't concerned about what's going on. Other, He just wants to be there. He wants to win. I think Tommy Lloyd has a really good uh, – a great nucleus and uh, will compete and will be a strong player in this Big 12. Uh, yeah, Oakland kind of needs yeah. him too. <laughs> yeah, Oakland doesn't have Titel. Yeah. I'd be remiss. You are an Arizona guy as well. To give you a few seconds on your team, also. Norman did a pretty solid job. I'm excited about uh, bringing in McDonald's All American Carter Bryant. Still not sure exactly where he fits in. I've seen some reports that he's going to come off the bench, which seems like a waste of a McDonald's All American. But time will tell. Um, the other X factor is just joining a new conference. Um, it's hard for the other teams because they don't know exactly how we play, but more so for us. And the bigger picture, um, I think the Big 12 tournament is going to be like an Elite Eight just because the quarterfinals will be all these ranked teams playing each other. Quarterfinals? It might, it might be one yeah. the round before the quarterfinals where have ranked teams play each other. <laughs> it's, it's wow. This is that, You're right. That is going to be an insane tournament. And uh, uh, it's also insane here that you got a team that in almost any other conference in the nation, Arizona will be picked to win this conference. And we're talking about them in pick number five right now. Uh, right. A, a top 10 team picked fifth yeah. in the conference. Uh, that is absurd. Uh, Matt or or Matt's cat, either one can answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the only other team in the top 25 polls going into the season is the Cincinnati Bearcats. Uh, do, do, do you, is there anything? Is, is this a good team? Can this team actually hang with the other five? I think they're a step below that, but there's still some nice pieces there uh, that they got. Yeah. Dylan Mitchell out of the transfer portal. And that meant to make us feel old, I joined James's kid, Dizzle James. <laughs> and then, yeah, Lacos is the uh, Butler transfer now, second year there. And yeah, Skilling's a real nice player. So they, there's some talent there. I, mean, I think I said they're a step below these other five. And and then also, oh, man, no, the other guy's been college forever who I like a lot. I think it's a better, better benefit at Cincinnati than he was Kentucky, CJ Frederick. Um, yeah. 
Can I, I ask you or Stalika or just anybody on the panel, do you agree with the ranking? Did, did this surprise you that a Cincinnati... Ask Stalika, definitely ask Stalika. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would probably say just based on experience, I can see why uh, UC would be in the top 25 right here. Now, granted, this is a team that's made the NIT, I think, what, two or three straight years, but this is definitely going to be a, a now or never type season for a uh, Wes Miller. Of course, the other side of the coin is you look at someone like Skillings. Yes, he's the leading returning scorer, but I know Cincinnati fans, at least the ones I've listened to, they'd be frustrated with him half the time, and they probably see Jizzle James as more of the uh, future leader, shall we say. But another thing you also have to keep in mind, at least guys are going to be eligible right off the bat. They're not ha having to wait like through late November or early December for guys like Ozzy Bandiago to be completely eligible so they'll get him uh, right off the bat uh, i i gotta say this surprised me it, it, maybe i'm the only one like had you asked me to assess cincinnati before the poll came out i would have said i west miller's a good coach they have good pieces i think they can play their way back inside the bubble to see them not in the rankings but in the preseason rankings it, that just how many NIT teams? It, it, it just did surprise me. And what am I missing? Are they better than what I think? I, I, honestly, Griggs, I agree with you, and I hate agreeing with you so much. But uh, but did you see I, who I, was I, in I the look, NIT last I, year? I, I, I look at I looked at Cincinnati. I, I said this is a team that's out of the bubble, probably going to be on the good side of it. And then yeah. then they're number twenty in the rankings, which I did. So I did, I agree with you about not understanding that. But uh, maybe the preseason poll says no more than me. Uh, yeah. it's never never been that way before, but maybe this year. But <laughs> you would have had a better NIT of teams that turned down the NIT. <laughs> uh, let me let's let's move on here. Titel, um, Texas Tech was in the NCAA tournament last year with a solid seed at at, at a six, and has almost everybody other than, other than Pop Isaac's back. Is, is this a tournament team again this year? I think you buried the lead. Like Pop Isaacs was like a huge part. Their <laughs> okay, team I, try, I tried to make, I tried to play this up for our Red Raiders fans. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on, <laughs> they have a great replacement at the point in Elijah Hawkins from Minnesota. They also bring in JT Toppin, who was a great freshman in New Mexico, and Kevin Overton from Drake. I don't know if Dr there's anybody left on Drake after all their transfers. We still haven't gotten to West Virginia yet. Um, no, I think the Red Raiders should be solid. Um, but again, like I think that we started. I mean, they're not ranked in half the conferences, so. <laughs> They did get a few votes in the poll. Uh, they're they're yeah. one of those teams receiving votes. Uh, Joby, also in the tournament last year as a six seed, was BYU. But we got we got a, a new head coach here now. Yeah, that that changes up uh, that changes up everything. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, I think Kentucky got a good one with Pope, and we'll we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, that was talked about in the SEC uh, prep. Uh, but BYU. I think BYU is a tournament team uh, like they were last year. So get ready, all you bracketologists, to pull your hair out over the <laughs> Sunday, you know, matchup sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it cost them, you know, it cost them, you know, Gonzaga, if you remember last year, got the five seed uh, that was rightfully uh, given to uh, BYU. Um, they uh, they have some freshmen coming in that were actually highly rated. Which when was the last time you heard BYU get that? <laughs> that that's yeah, this guy uh, Igor D D D Damon is a demon. Uh, yeah, Damon. Da Damon, Damon. Yeah, he, and, uh, yeah, Damon. And, he and looks Damon catching. Uh, yeah. So they have two top fifty guys, um, which is interesting. BYU is kind of a systemy program. It, I feel like over the years, to a degree, I think that they're going to be strong again. Uh, Going to Provo is tough. They will win home games, uh, you know, on a consistent basis. This is the place where the Kansases of the world it's yes. could stub their toe. Uh, but yeah, we saw Gonzaga for years, you, you know, always have fits, you know, when they were in the WCC. That um, being said, uh, well, and BYU would often win in the kennel uh, in that case. Um, but I think... This is where they land. They are below Texas Tech. Uh, I actually would say Texas Tech is ahead of the Bearcats. The below Texas Tech and and probably below Cincinnati as well. But you know what? In this conference, being eighth is a tournament spot. Right. Not that the Big Twelve is any stranger to rabbit environments, but one of the things about BYU, and I know you all know this, is that the Marriott Center is 
big and loud and as big as it is the fans are right on top of the court it's just a great atmosphere and it's a great atmosphere for a wcc game what's yeah. it going to be like with arizona and kansas and baylor and all of these teams yeah. houston coming in we're going to have some fun yeah. games this year <laughs> at byu and those are not going to be yeah. easy to win uh, i mean byu for whatever reason i mean that place just gets jacked for basketball have they ever not sold out a game no and they are the they're the professional sports team i know you have salt lake up the road but it, it, they are the professional sports team for that area they have the intensity it's like you know for both football and basketball it's like an sec environment um the so students they, i mean so many students yeah <laughs> who are older and louder yeah. Yeah, because of the uh missionary trips uh stalika you're our scheduling expert do you have their schedule in front of you uh, because I would like to know who does, I don't know off the top of my head, who does go that's at the top of the conference who we can point to and go, uh-oh, Kansas, uh-oh, Arizona, like we were saying, because they might not. With yeah. In Mooney Magic, be. I was, this is a, I mean, there are a lot yeah. of rabid venues in this conference, maybe more than most, but like, uh, yeah, PYU is certainly in the discussion. <laughs> Salika. Well, I'm going to have to uh, pull up the BYU schedule if we're just strictly talking about that. Our Arizona folks will point out Arizona does go to the Marriott Center. So they get yeah. Baylor. They get Baylor at home. Uh, they get Texas Tech at home. Uh, they get Arizona at home, like we said. There, there are some big games. Yeah. Right. Well, all their highlights are going to be within the conference, but if you're talking about non-conference, you've got a game at Providence, but their only other – Games of note are going to be in the uh, Rady Children's Invitational in San Diego where they play an underrated Ole Miss squad in either Purdue or NC State, but a lot of bye games in between then and the time they start yeah, the Big and that's 12. How that's how they'll have a net that's five again, like last yeah. year. But, 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 but you, if you, time, when you have this type of conference schedule, you, you need some bye games. They can't, <laughs> here's the thing is, they can't avoid – the holy war this year it cannot be avoided i'm assuming that we get two of them again game. yeah <laughs> oh, let, let, let's let's keep rolling here uh dormy let me go back to you another team that got a little bit of preseason love uh and kind of like baylor could be relying on on new players coming in how about k-state this year yeah jerome ting um a uh, real disappointing last year after a magical uh elite eight run the year before uh, they're not bringing many back. They're bringing three back, and they're bringing eight eight new guys in. Um, they uh, some of the transfers are big though. They've got some big time names, some big time players. Uh, if you remember Coleman Hawkins, a big guy for Illinois down low, he, he's a good athlete. He's a good player. He's coming in for him. Uh, Doug McDaniel played some guard at Michigan, had some issues off the court. Uh, he's going to play for Jerome Tang Uguana Onesu. Uh, the Kentucky, uh, he was a big time recruit. Kentucky was thrilled to land, didn't work out there. He's coming for Tang too. And Acor Acor, and he was for under the radar teams. He was at Sanford and he was a factor. He's a good, he's a good ball player. If Very Tang good. can make this mix work, cause he's got some good ball players. I, I think he could have a solid year right in the middle of this big 12. I agree. I, I think this is that one of those teams right in that bubble pack here from, from, from this Big 12, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th places. Uh, Matt, we haven't discussed a team that was in the NCAA tournament last year as a nine seed. How about Jamie Dixon's TCU team? Yeah, I think this year they're going to drop off a little bit in that. I'm just yeah, look at that, that roster. I think Uday's going to take a big step up in that. But man, Frankie Collins, it feels like his fifth school. <laughs> In that, and then just look at the rest of this roster. Well, 95 percent of last year's scoring is gone off of this roster. Yeah, how about that like, for a number? Yeah, but <laughs> the five percent that's back. Oh, oh, oh. That's probably basically Uday. Like, yep. And like, <laughs> and like this, okay, right? Like Jace Posey, Jace Posey, David Punch are like decently rated freshmen. And that, but like, and there's not like stand like HRHR. We mentioned I can't state no, like, even under the radar standout transfer here at TCU. So that's man, I saw Torvik had him at 49th, and even that feels high looking at this roster. <laughs> that's where man Dixon's a heck of a coach, but man, it's good, it's gonna take a job this year. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if they're like 11th or 12th in the league this year. 
Uh, a team that I know Mr. Titel would love to see 11th, 12th, maybe lower in the conference this year. Uh, while you, while you, you no longer, your team is no longer in the Pac-12, you did bring your in-state rivals with you. Uh, Arizona State now in the Big 12 with you. Uh, and Titel, what about uh, the Sun Devils this year? They have a McDonald's All-American and Jaden Quaintance. Um, they have some other uh, good guy, uh, Sonon or Sosan, who flipped from Tucson to Tempe, I heard. after Two we got five-star prospects, I think. Yeah. Hey uh, BJ Freeman from Milwaukee, Bashir Jihad from Ball State, Austin Mason from Missouri State, so a lot of Midwestern family values as well. Um, I think that they're going to have problems. I mean, Quaintance is legit, um, but I think it's just, as we said, like half the conference is ranked. And the Sun Devils are not. So um, it's certainly not a gimme. I've seen us lose. I've seen my Wildcats lose in Tempe more often than I'd like to admit, sadly. But um, I think this is certainly a bottom half of the conference team. Agreed. Does Bobby Hurley, does Bobby Hurley have the hottest seat in the entire country? I mean, serious. It, it, I don't know the country, but maybe in this warm. conference. <laughs> yeah. Problem uh, is, he's lived on that hot seat for about three or four yeah. years, and he's gotten accustomed to it. Yeah. <laughs> Griggs, that's the what? curtain of distraction for all the people. Yeah. Oh, G- Griggs, his brother's hot. <laughs> yeah. uh, Griggs, we have not yet mentioned one more team that was in the NCAA tournament last year. The, uh, Colorado was. Do they yeah. have anything this year coming back? No. Okay. Uh, they. I mean, I, I love Tad Boyle. Uh, you know, Tad Pole is a coach. Uh, he's done really well there. They were really good last year. Actually, not just got to the tournament, but made the round of 32 you don't really think of Colorado as being a blue blood but they have had some really good teams under him but they're they're tasked with I I don't know if 95 percent of the scoring is gone but about 85 to 90 percent of it is all their starters are gone and this is just the problem that I sort of have when looking at these teams coming in it's hard to assess a team that you've never seen before (laughs) Matt you had a thought of them or yeah no that's I'm saying like that this like I'm looking at this roster, I'm like, this looks like the quoted major league. Who are these guys? Well, yeah, well, like, uh-huh. and I did. Boyle, Boyle's a hell of a coach, but man, again, that's, oh, he is. Yeah, they lost he, three pros. Team, they were good. That was they lost three second pros. round game against Marquette was real scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they uh, were. They were great last year. Uh, Dorman, uh, Utah, another new team to this conference coming over the Pac-12. Do you expect anything from from the Utes this year? No. Uh, okay. another, Good. Another, another easy answer. <laughs> another team that's lost everything. Five of their uh, five of their top six are gone. Uh, there's a fifth year senior in Gabe Madsen. He's solid. He's good, but he doesn't have much uh, other uh, good pieces around him. His twin brother is transferring in. Um, I, I just don't see enough scoring. I don't see enough athletes. Uh, Craig Smith's in for a long year, at Utah. Well, maybe a team that does have a little bit of something this year, a little bit of life among the bottom teams, a Joby UCF yeah. has a couple of guys that uh, has some talent, but I don't know if they have the depth, but what are your thoughts? But, but you know what, when this is not your 2023 big 12, except at the top, at the top it is, but this now looks like a normal conference that has bottom feeders. I mean, we weren't used to the big 12 having true bottom feeders. Where, you know, mm-hmm. when Kansas State wasn't good or Iowa State wasn't good, they still could bring the entire conference up because they were actually decent teams. Uh, the last three teams mentioned are not really that decent. UCF is decent. They might be able to get some wins here and there. As you mentioned out, uh, they got Darius Thompson, uh, uh, Johnson, Jalen Sellers coming back. They have some ability. They showed some, you know, they were tricky. When people went to Orlando, they lost last year. You know, this is kind of a, a different part of the country, but it's going to be a tra- trek for most of these teams. It's a different part of the country than the BYU, but it, it's a lot of the same problems that teams will find when they go there. And so UCF just might, if they can put out of conference, they were awful out of conference last year. If they can put that a little bit more together this year, get to 500 in the Big 12 with a few scouts here and there, who knows? We might be talking about UCF. I seriously doubt we will not. I am very confident saying we will not be talking about Utah, Colorado, or Arizona State. You know, I, I think UCF yeah. will be ahead of them 
in the conference. They will be NIT. I truly believe NIT is their floor, not their ceiling, like it was. Wow. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, Ty, Tytel, a team that another team that maybe we won't be talking much more about after today. How about West Virginia? Mountaineers only won nine games last year under Josh Eilert, so we certainly should not have talked about them last year. But Darian DeVries has won 25 or more games in each of the past four years at Drake. I know this is not the MVC. He does add the two-time MVC Player of the Year and his son in Tucker. He adds a 2021 National Champion in Joseph Yusufu. He adds a 15-points-a-game scorer in Javon, Javon Small from Oklahoma State and a 20-point-a-game scorer, Jaden Stone from Detroit Mercy. And the leading shot blocker in the MVC, Tobio Okani. He's got transfers who are fantastic. He needs them. Um, they did lose a ton. Raekwon Battle, Jesse Edwards, Quinn Slizinski, Noah Farrakhan, and Kirkrisa, or as I like to call him, that traitor. So are you kind of putting them up there with UCF like Joby did? Do you think this team is NIT, maybe NCAA good with, with all these transfers or not quite? NIT is a legit possibility. He has okay. good transfers from good schools who produced at a high level last year. He might have to start off five of them, but his son is a two-time conference player of the year. Is there a better transfer in America? Uh, yeah, the two-time conference player of the year, but not in the Big 12. <laughs> I get uh, But, hey, uh, I'm not I'm not with you in the West Virginia, but, but you know, you may be right. I may be wrong. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Stalika, we do have one last team we have not yet discussed in this conference, uh, and that is Oklahoma State. Yeah, I guess uh, T. Boone Pickens wasn't able to entice people through uh, NIL for the Cowboys this year. But if you're looking at two uh, returning players in uh, Bryce Thompson and uh, Jamron Keller, you're also going to have uh, Khalil Brantley coming over from LaSalle, who is one of their leading scorers, who uh, – left North Philly, get Brandon Newman coming over from Western Kentucky, and they also get Abu Usaman, who uh, was at North Texas and Xavier prior to coming to Oklahoma State, but probably going to be a long year in uh, Stillwater. But on the bright side, at least they still get to play Oklahoma once in uh, Oklahoma City during the non-conference portion of the year before they get into the Big 12. So Bedlam, not quite dead yet. Uh, well, Griggs, how about Steve Lutz coming in here at Oklahoma State? Do you think do you think he's the right guy for this job and to and to, and to build this program back up? Uh, um, good. That, that that's a good question. I've been I've been kind of thinking about that quite a bit. I'm going to go with yes. That I think that he was a solid hire, and they do have a few pieces coming in this year, but I don't think it's going to happen right away. And again, with basketball sort of being what it is in the NIL portal era, do you build anymore or do you just try and load up on the portal and recruits as best you can from year to year to year? And if that's the case, is he the right guy? I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes coaches that have a history of building may not be as effective in the modern day. Anymore. Especially the modern day in a power conference. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, that is all of 300 teams that are in this conference or however many it is. Uh, I want to do is what we do at the end of each of these podcasts, go through each of you and ask three questions. Number one, who's going to win the conference regular season title? Number two, how many bids is the league going to get? And number three, do you have any other final thoughts about either the Big 12 or any other subject you want to hit on tonight? And Matt, let me start with you tonight. So I'm going to pick Houston to win it. I'll go with eight bids. And this are going half. I know there's going to be nine total. I'm going to say Texas Tech just misses mm -hmm. of the of the ones, you know, kind of like the six to nine range. And that I think they just leave it like literally like first four out. And that, and I also found like we're, we're used to how the Big 12 basically has no weaknesses. That's not the case this year. We, we went over some weaknesses at the bottom and had to wear. I think you can see some top teams that can have a little gaudier records, more like four. Are they doing 18 or 20 games? 20. 20. Okay, so more like I think like 16 and fours, 15 and fives, to where they'll beat each other up, so, but then they'll take care of the bottom. Okay. Uh, Stalika. I would probably say we're going to be looking at about uh, eight or nine teams that are probably going to end up uh, winning the. Uh, at least getting to the NCAA tournament this year out of the Big 12. It's going to be a tough call as to who exactly would be uh, winning the regular season title. I would probably say 
Kansas would turn out to be the uh, the favorite right here. Although I would not rule out the uh, Arizona Wildcats. Shout out to Dorman and uh, Titel right here. But we've also seen some strange things at least come out of the Big 12 Conference Tournament, which is still going to be in uh, Kansas City, I believe. But as far as a final thought, it's hard to believe you have to go back to the Mick Cronin era as far as to win uh, – Cincinnati last made the NCAA tournament. I think the experience alone, they're probably going to end up getting an eight or nine seed, but at least there's still going to be one guy on the roster that has at least one victory in his career over Xavier. And of course, that's a one-time Butler player, Seamus Lacocious, as opposed to everyone else on the roster. Oh, there's fighting words. Uh, uh, Dorman. I'm going with nine tournament teams. Ten wouldn't stun me. Um, I'm going with Kansas, as a bunch of you guys mentioned. I think Zeke Mayo puts him uh, over the uh, hump. I think he's such a difference maker uh, with Dewan Harris and Dickinson. I think he's the difference. Uh, Kansas wins the title. Um, my final thought, it's going to be interesting when we talk about tournament teams as the season goes on, because what can your conference record be if you're the ninth or tenth team, can you can can you go eight and uh, eight and what twelve and make the tournament seven and thirteen? It, it's going to be tight at the end there with these last few teams on the cut line, but then they're going to eat up a lot in the preseason. So they're going to there a lot of these comp, a lot of these overall records are going to start strong, and then we're going to start piling on uh, conference losses. So it's going to be interesting. And like everyone said, there's some tough t- places to play. Central Florida isn't easy. BYU's tough. Iowa State, West Virginia historically when they're good, and there's a lot of travel going in from West Coast to East Coast. So. There's going to be some upsets, a, a lot of upsets that people don't see coming in this conference. It's going to be a, a really fun year in the Big 12. I agree with you there. Uh, Titel. So I think the champ is going to be Iowa State. I was going to go Houston or Kansas State. Excuse me, Houston or Kansas. But once you reminded me that Keyshawn Gilbert's back, I'm like, oh, that's a good team. Let's put this. Oh, they're, they're not bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as how many make it, I think this is actually one of the – easier ones to set the number at eight and a half. So Ken Palm and Torvik both have the exact same eight teams in the top 28 in the country, Houston, Kansas, Iowa state, Arizona, Baylor, Texas, Texas, Cincy, and BYU. So you can book those eight. The ninth is where we get some separation. Ken Palm has Kansas state at 49. Torvik has them at 29. So that's the coin flip. And I like Jerome Tang. So I'm going to go with nine that they're in. And then my final thought is not about the Big 12. Um, the exhibition page is always one of my favorite things just because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, I saw tonight that uh, Tristan Maxwell of Hampton, who was a uh, perfectly mediocre starter for them last year, 20 points, 11 boards, and 11 assists tonight in the win over Virginia Lynchburg. Yes, it's a like, D5 school, but yes, it's a triple-double. <laughs> so shout out Tristan Maxwell. He might be in for a hell of a season. All right, there we go. We just went way under the radar. Uh, that, that was uh, that was pretty far I'm, under the I'm, radar. I'm, I'm, I'm like it though. Uh, that, there's just, my pick for the Miak already. Um, UVA wise must not have been available that night. <laughs> uh, Joby, uh, speaking of UVA, uh, I think nine is a good number that teams mentioned. I think there is a little bit of a cliff. I think John Dorman uh, are are right on it. Like I said, UCF could surprise and supplant like a Cincinnati or someone like that that's unexpected, but nine seems like a good number. The reason why nine is because we do have a drop-off in the Big 12 this year. You're going to see people put up realistic records. You better be 500 or at least right at around 500 in the Big 12 this year. Whereas in the past, you could get away with maybe being you know, seven and 11, but, oh, you beat Kansas and you beat Arizona. Can't do that this year. Well, guess what? If you're, if you're this year in the big 12, seven, 11, you didn't beat Kansas without also losing to Oklahoma state. And and that's going to be a problem uh, this year that didn't exist when, oh, well, you lost, you know, you you lost to K state, you know, at home and that's a bad loss. No, no, no. This is going to be bad losses that you take. Simple math. As I mentioned at the very top of the show, my pick to win is Kansas of the regular season. 
you know, play the lottery if you want to know who wins the tournament in the Big 12 because that's how it turns out. It's always crazy. But the regular season champ will be restored, right? Kansas will get their inherited crown. And the last, my last comment is um, of in the next couple of days, you will see the preseason. You will see the preseason uh, rankings for the J&G, which uh, serve as a basis like the net, et cetera, uh, for the power element of uh, early on in the season for the calculations of the J&G. As a note, the J&G agrees with me and says nine teams in the tournament in the at-large level field. I agree with you. I agree with every, almost everybody here. I'm at the nine teams also. I think the titles eight that are in, I, I completely agree completely. I think a ninth does get pulled in a UCF, a, Texas, a, a Kansas State, somebody in that group d- does get pulled in as, as the ninth. Uh, my pick to win it all is Kansas uh and by that, I mean the Big 12 championship, maybe not the Big 12 tournament, but very likely another tournament that gets played, played after the Big 12 tournament. But we'll get to that a little later on in the in the preseason show. But I, I love this Kansas team this year. I do think they win this conference. Uh, Griggs, how about you? Um, My preseason pick to win it, it, it all is Houston uh, to b- win, at least be the first place team and to win the national championship. I'm just really, really big on this Cougars team. Um, as far as teams into the tournament, I think I'm going to go with eight and stick with eight, and it's the same eight that you all had. Uh, I'm not picking Virginia to make it out of here for two reasons. One, they're not even in the conference, but if they were, Tony Bennett just retired. So I, I've got to not go with them. Any other final thought? <laughs> um, yeah, like a lot is going to happen between now and the end. In any given year, eight teams that are in the preseason top 25 about a third of them don't even make the ncaa tournament and half of them don't finish in the top 25 but at least from where we sit now in the middle of october oh my god what a quarterfinal this would be and really with the i i kind of thought that when the big 10 lost its 10 team double round robin format that it would lose something and it might still but uh you know, there's still eight really solid teams in this league. And when you've got five of the top 10, that's almost unbelievable that you could start out with so many teams ranked that high. It's legitimately possible this year that all four members of the final four could come from this conference. Which yeah. will be the first time since 1976 when four big 10 teams were in the yes, final four, four big with Michigan, teams. Indiana, Rutgers, and UCLA all in yes. the final four that year. I mean, it was, it was a remarkable year for the big 10. on that note i do want to thank everyone for joining us uh check out the season preview tab up there for links to all of our podcasts all the great interviews uh write-ups uh the next few days here check out the jng tab up there as well as joby mentioned but on behalf of david dorman david griggs joby fortune in the center square john titel matt sikowski john stalika i'm chad sherwood thanks for joining us talk to you again real soon